Okay, in the previous segments, we've covered hard wheat and soft wheat and yeasted bread and quick breads. But there are so many other great grains out there besides just wheat that you will enjoy um, learning to use in all your baking. And two of my favorite grains are actually a type of wheat, spelt and kamut. I don't deny that there are wheat sensitivities out there. I don't think quite as prevalent as we're um, being told or is being promoted. I think much of the problem is the commercially processed white flour. And we've had so many testimonies, people that think they need to go gluten-free or even need to go no wheat. Um, when they start using freshly milled flour, they have no problems at all. But those that may be a little sensitive or just want to use some other variety, we love both um, spelt and kamut, which are ancient varieties of wheat. Spelt, I particularly love. Uh, it has the nutty red flavor that you've already probably discovered that I really love. But spelt is almost the best of both worlds. It is high moisture like soft wheat. So if you use it as a substitute in your cookies or muffins or anything like that, then you typically have to increase the flour, just like with soft wheat, quarter cup for every cup of white flour called for. So in a cookie recipe, you would use a cup and a half of spelt flour for your um, cup of white flour. But it has that rich, nutty, nutty flavor. But spelt also makes great yeasted breads. And like I said, for people that may be a little more sensitive to the more modern wheats, which there's nothing wrong with the modern wheats, Despite what you've read, wheat is not genetically modified. So wheat uh, spelt is a more ancient grain and little different protein structure that may be more easy to digest. One thing I also want to mention here, so many people just think of milling grains into flour. Grains can be boiled whole and eaten just like you would eat rice or um, boiled whole and drained and make a vegetable salad with grains as your base. Chop up some great vegetables and toss a dressing over it. Very, very delicious. And on that note, one of my favorite grains to eat whole and boiled or um, put in soups and stews instead of rice is kamut. Now, kamut is the grandfather of durum wheat. Durum wheat is your pasta making uh, wheat. So, so much of the kamut now even grown in this country is actually sold to the pasta industry to make pasta. But kamut is a delicious um, grain. I love it to mill it into flour. I usually, I use it in my tortillas. I use it in muffins. Typically, I, I mix it with some other wheat. I love red, white, kamut combination, usually equal parts of each one to make my yeasted breads. Or it makes also great um, like French bread, something that you don't need a big rise on. But mostly what people love about kamut is making their pasta out of kamut. Again, I love to boil it. I put it in my chicken soup instead of pasta or rice. The nice thing about kamut is it stays intact even if it's boiled a lot or left in that chicken soup a lot instead of like rice that gets kind of mushy. So those are two grains you may want to experiment with and maybe just buy a two pound bag at first to start with instead of a big six gallon bucket. But I think you'll enjoy um, experimenting with kamut and spelt. Like I said, I love both. Um, my favorite combination right now is uh, two parts red and one part kamut is what I use a lot to make my bread. Okay, so another recipe that is in both my, the red uh, book here, the Bread Becker's Recipe Collection, and my book, the Essential Homeground Flour Book, is Ezekiel bread. Very, very popular. There's many, many, many variations. But years ago, long before I even started milling my grain, I read a book called God's Recipe, and in there, she felt like God had given her the proportions of the ingredients listed in Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 9. The proportions for wheat, 
spelt, barley, millet, lentils, and beans. Those ingredients are listed in Ezekiel 4, verse 9, where God tells Ezekiel to take wheat, spelt, barley, millet, lentils, and beans, put them into one vessel, and make a cake out of it. Now, I, I kind of interpret that one vessel is, well, this is our one vessel right now, and uh, that because each of those grains were used independently, they made bread out of barley, they made bread out of wheat, they made bread out of spelt, depending on the harvest season and, and what was available. They ate beans, they ate lentils, but God wanted them to mix them all together and make this cake. Now, the thing that's so interesting about this combination of grains and beans that I adapted from that original recipe that I got read many years ago is a combination of grains and beans makes a complete protein. What that means is the few amino acids that are missing in grains, they are found in beans. The few amino acids that are lower in your beans, you can find them in your grains. So when you put these grains and beans together, this makes a complete protein. So I love the Ezekiel bread. The Ezekiel bread recipe found in either one of my books is a yeasted bread, but it is a batter bread. It is a sweet bread. It's called a fasting bread, mostly just because it appears that Ezekiel fasted on this bread. You do not have to fast to eat this bread. In fact, it is one of my favorite breads to have in the morning. And most times just a, a nice slab of, of Ezekiel bread toasted with some butter is all I need. Sometimes I'll add a smoothie or something like that with it. But it's a delicious, very nourishing bread. Now, it is not a sandwich bread texture. And so for that reason, my kids kind of were like, yeah, we like the Ezekiel bread, but you can't make a sandwich. And it, it does kind of crumble and fall apart after a day or two. But I loved the combination of grains and beans there. So I discovered taking this Ezekiel mix, mixing it up very, very well. So I had even distribution of all the grains and the beans and the millet. And then I use this flour in my cookies, in my muffins, and one of my favorites is in my brownies. So instead of using soft wheat or hard wheat or anything, I use Ezekiel mixture for that. And then when my kids are eating something like that, they're getting a complete protein. I'll even use this flour, this combination, the Ezekiel mix combination, as the flour in my basic bread dough. Makes a little different texture bread, uses a little more flour than just your hard red or hard white, but it makes a delicious sandwich texture bread instead of just using it in the Ezekiel bread recipe. One thing I haven't gone over earlier that I just thought of, I want to bring your attention for most grains, this is um, the proportions that you'll get. For every cup of grain, when you mill it into flour, you're going to get about a cup and a half of flour for most of your grains. Soft wheat will be a little more, spelt will be a little bit more because they're higher moisture, but pretty much you can calculate it by that. So for me, I only mill the grain, the amount of flour that I need for a recipe. And I may have a little bit left over, but that's okay. So what I do with my Ezekiel mix is, and this is the reason I remembered to tell you about that. So I'll stir it up really well so I get that good cross section. And if I'm going to use this Ezekiel flour, say in my pancake recipe that calls for three cups of flour, I'll mill two cups of Ezekiel mixture and that will give me three cups of flour to substitute for the, reg for the flour in my pancake recipe. So I use Ezekiel mix a lot and uh, it's just a great, great grain combination to have on hand. In fact, Brad and I are kind of known places for our Ezekiel mix pancakes. In fact, this Sunday, we're gonna be making them for our church uh, for breakfast. So it's just a great grain to have on hand, great storable food. Um, if you want to just buy the packages already mixed up, we sell it like this. This is one recipe in our cookbooks. 
If you're going to make the Ezekiel bread recipe just like it is in the cookbook, you'll use all of the grain in this bag. Mill it into flour and you'll use all of the flour. But if you want to use it and substitute it in other recipes, just mix it up well, use it, mill however much you need for that recipe. Then if, if I have a bag on hand and I've used part of it, I'll make a little mark on here, Xing it out, so that I know that it's not a full recipe. But here at Bread Becker's, we sell it in the bags like this that is one recipe of the grains and beans listed just like it is in the cookbook. But we also, because I've been promoting it so much to use it in muffins, pancakes, cookies, um, brownies, in other places to get that wonderful combination of grains and beans, we also sell it in the one gallon pail, three recipes worth just all mixed up and dumped in there. So if you know that you're gonna use it more for cookies and pancakes and brownies, then I would recommend buying a pail. We do sell buckets that have 17 individual bags in it as well. But it, I, I do wanna mention again that it is, um, the Ezekiel mixture of grains and beans is a wonderful food storage preparedness uh, mixture of grains and beans. If you buy all the ingredients in, say, buckets, then you've got a wonderful cross-section of grains and beans that you can use not just to mix up for Ezekiel mix, but you have beans that you can boil and eat. You've got lentils that you can boil and eat, and you've got millet that you can use in other things. Speaking of millet, millet is another grain that I really discovered later on after I had started milling my grains. Millet in this country, you can look at it and maybe uh, recognize it as that little yellow seed that you find in your bird seed. Millet is a staple grain in Asian countries, India. This is their breakfast cereal, their breakfast porridge. Um, they boil it and eat it much like we would eat oatmeal. Millet is a very nutritious grain, one that I enjoy incorporating it anywhere I can. It's high in B vitamins, it's easy to digest, excellent baby food, excellent, say, elderly food, people that have uh, digestive issues. It's just so good, you can boil it and eat it. Or the nice thing about millet is it's so small and easy to crunch, you can throw it in whole in your bread dough, in your muffins, in, in your pancakes, in your cookies, even in granola, and it'll add that little nice crunch, but you can be getting this good wholesome millet into your diet. So I, my basic muffin recipe when I discovered millet, I just started throwing a quarter cup of whole millet in my basic muffin recipe that I had been making for years. So millet is a great grain that you might wanna have a little bit on hand. Um, I, can, I boil it and eat it. You can make it creamy with um, milk and water and add cinnamon and say eat it more like oatmeal or you can boil it just like you would rice. It doesn't take as long to cook as your other whole grains. It only takes about 20 or 30 minutes and substitute it like rice. And there's just so many things that you can do with millet. And I hope you'll enjoy it and incorporate it somewhere in your diet. It's just a great, great grain. It is naturally gluten-free. So you won't make a yeasted bread out of millet because it does not have that protein structure that is specific to wheat family, but it is great to have on hand to incorporate in your other baking um, recipes. Corn, I'm a southerner. We grew up on cornbread and biscuits, not very much yeasted bread. In fact, my mother never made yeasted bread and she was a great cook and a great biscuit maker. But corn is a great uh, cornbread, corn muffins and Especially you Southerners will love it when you first when you taste it freshly milled. The commercial corn meal and corn flour in the store, of course, has had the bran and germ stripped out just like your commercial white flour. So the flavor in freshly milled corn is absolutely delicious. Just like wheat, there's varieties of corn. There's white corn and yellow corn. And guess what? Just like wheat, there's di it's a different flavor thing. And I tell people, Think of red grapes and green grapes. What's the difference? Different variety, flavor. Green apples, red apples. What's the difference? Flavor. So don't overcomplicate and get this all confused. Different varieties, different flavors. So white corn's gonna be a little more bland. 
your yellow corn is going to have a little more flavor. And again, just like with my wheat, I'll use these where I want flavor. If I'm doing a Mexican cornbread that's going to have some hot pepper jack cheese and some chilies, I'll probably use white corn because I want a more mellow flavor. If I'm making my southern mother's uh, cornbread dressing or just a traditional cornbread, I like the richer flavor of the yellow corn. Now, let's just briefly talk about the two uh, types of corn. This one you can see, I hope from, from the camera you can tell, this is a bigger kernel of corn. It's got a little indention right there where the seed attaches to the cob. This is known as field corn or dent corn. Ground in um, the commercial, the electric mills that we have, we recommend here at Breadbeckers, you're going to get a nice fluffy flour out of um, the dent corn or field corn. Same basic flavor, whether it's white or yellow, as popcorn. Popcorn, on the other hand, it's a little, it's a variety of corn that is very compact. And so when you heat it, that moisture in there makes it explode. And that's why it's popcorn. But you can use popcorn to mill into flour and make your cornbread or your corn muffins or whatever, just like your dent corn or field corn. So if you don't want two varieties of corn around, then just buy popcorn. Again, white corn, white popcorn, a little milder flavor, yellow popcorn, little, a little more flavor. But now here's the difference when you mill these into flour. Because early on, our mills that we recommend mill the flour so fine and so soft, your dent corn or your field corn is going to give you a very fluffy, fine corn flour. And people were like, I want a little more uh, texture. I want something closer to cornmeal. Then you want popcorn. If you mill it same settings in the electric wonder mill, um, you're going to find you'll get a little coarser cornmeal if you mill popcorn. So those are the different corns, and uh, I hope you'll try some freshly milled cornbread. For grits, I don't use a grain mill, an electric flour mill, to mill my grits. I just use a blender. Grits are a little more coarse, and uh, I just use a blender for that. And a big blender if you need to do a lot of grits, but just a small little instant blender um, works very well if I'm just doing a small amount of grits. Corn is poor man's food. It only takes about a cup of corn to mill into grits to meet, feed my whole family when my kids were all at home of nine and they got seconds of grits. It wasn't just a little tiny helping. So a little bit goes a long way when you're making grits, but I hope you'll try it. And those of you that think you don't like grits, I do hope you'll try some freshly ground grits. Flavor is totally different than, again, the white grits that are in the store, stripped of all the bran and germ, and, of course, just leaving you the starchy part. All right, that takes us to one of the last grains I want to go over today as um, different grains that you may want to try, even if you're just getting started. Oats are very, very popular. And the thing about oats is the fiber in oats are in every layer. So that's why um, we do sell rolled oats. It's the only processed grain that we sell here at Breadbeckers. And this is what I mean by a rolled oat. It is just an oat groat. This is your oat groat that has um, been flattened. Oats are very soft grain. You can actually pop them in your mouth, chew them up very, very easily, unlike your wheat and some of these other grains that are so hard. And so when you run oats through a, a roller mill that will flatten them into rolled oats or what some people know as oatmeal. So we do sell both here at Breadbeckers, oat groats and rolled oats. Oat groats are what you want if you want to roll your own, which we sell attachments that you can roll your own fresh as you're ready to use it. Or if you want to use oat flour, it's a very high moisture. Oats are very sweet and uh, just very nice grain and makes wonderful cakes and can substitute in cookies and things like that. A little crumbly, so you usually have to mix it with some wheat flour as well or some type of other flour. But oats are just a great grain. You can boil these oat groats and eat them whole. 
takes about an hour to cook, so you might can see why they started rolling them and making rolled oats that only take about 15 minutes to cook. Um, so that's our oats. Of course, oats are great to use in granola. Rolled oats are great to use in granola, cookies, oatmeal cookies. And oats are so high in fiber and so, so good for you. They're high in lecithin and they're high in a type of fiber called beta-glucans, which is, which is very, very slowly broken down in, in your gut. And that's why oats have such a reputation of stick to your ribs. You eat a bowl of oatmeal, you're not going to be hungry for a while. So that's our oats. One last thing before we close out this segment that I want to call your attention to. You may notice that some of our grains have white labels and some have green labels. The green labels is a designation for organic, certified organic. The white label is a designation for just a commercial grown grain, not organic. So that's our labeling uh, system. And uh, yeah, so that you can look for on our website or when you come in our store. Last but not least, our two cookbooks. The recipe collection is uh, just what it's called. Early on in the way back in 1992 when we first started our business and Brad and I, my husband and I and our children, our family would go and do conventions and homeschool shows or whatever, we would cook and we would serve cookies and bread and cakes and coffee cake and all these things and everybody wanted the recipes. So eventually my daughter Ashley and I got together and we put together a collection of all of uh, our, some of our favorite, favorite recipes. There's more in here than just, just baked goods. There's some salads and, and different things, even a section, a little section on dehydration, because those were things that I loved in the early days, and those were recipes that I was sharing as we went out and about. And then in 2015, I was contacted by a publishing company and they wanted to do a book, publish a book on home flour milling, and I was asked to write that book. So this is the Essential Home Ground Flour book. Very um, excited about this book. It was a real work of, of pro a process of work, um, but it has so much more information. It does have some of the nutritional information that those have, that have heard me speak and teach will know that I'm very passionate about. Has a whole section on different grains and beans and uh, baking qualities of those, explanation of the wheat, goes through the baking ingredients just like we've talked about here today. Both books actually do that but this one in so much more detail. And then over 100 baking recipes. All the baking recipes in this book are in here, but there's more than baking in this collection. So, but many, many more as well. So we hope you've enjoyed our basic list of getting started items. We hope that you are not overwhelmed, but that this will help you in your journey to better understand what you need what types of grain work well for different recipes. So thank you for joining us. Again, I'm Sue Becker with the Bread Beckers, and we're here to help you on this journey to good health and freshly milled flour.